Last week, we got the kickoff of the Gotham War. Batman, Catwoman going to war. And there were some issues with the with the comic book. Specifically, the art from Mike Hawthorne was very substandard, especially when illustrating Selina Kyle, Catwoman. This week, we get the triumphant return of Jorge Jimenez to Batman for Batman 137. I guess it's chapter two of the Gotham War. And while the art in this is spectacular compared to the previous issue, he cannot save Batman from Chip Zdarsky and Tinny Howard's just absolutely terrible idea for this comic book. There is a premise underneath Gotham War that kind of is intriguing. What happened if Batman was out of the seat for eight weeks and when he returned, somebody had fixed all the problems in Gotham using completely different methods than he uses? How would he think about that? Would he be able to get behind it? Would he be able to accept that maybe he had done things wrong for 60 or 70 or 80 years or however long Batman has been patrolling the streets of Gotham? There's a premise there, and there's actually uh, perhaps a good story there. The execution was really terrible. The idea that you can fix crime and actually drop crime rates by creating more crime is just really stupid. And the other part of it, the worst part of the execution itself, was the characterization of the Bat family. Because when Selena Kyle said, hey, listen, I'm the new crime boss. I've taken everybody else's thugs and I've trained them to be cat burglars. And I've somehow dropped crime by somehow creating more crime. But these are good crimes because rich people deserve to be robbed from. And then half of the Bat family kind of like, oh, this is a, this is a kind of a good idea. I don't know, Batman. I think she's got you in a checkmate here, buddy. Maybe we should be going along with Selena Kyle. Fortunately, in that opening salvo of Gotham War, they were only words. There was only people considering, pondering the idea other than, than Jason Todd, who actually went behind Batman's back, had a parlay with Selina Kyle, the new crime boss of Gotham, got his ass totally handed to him, and then swore fealty to her and begged her like, Queen, please, let me be in your court. I'll, I'll be your inside guy in the Bat family and, and try to persuade people to join your concert or whatever. So he was the only one that did anything action-wise that was so out of character, it's not even funny. And now it goes downhill from here in Batman 137 because the entire Batman family, besides Batman and one character, their actions in this comic book absolutely betray their histories. It makes no sense whatsoever. So let's talk about the art first because that is the big thing. I am happy to say that Jorge Jimenez is an enormous upgrade on this comic book. There is a level of fierceness. There's a level of energy that goes up about 50 billion percent with Jorge Jimenez on the art as well. Batman is actually made to look pretty damn cool. Gone is the bisexual lighting, which likely wasn't Mike Hawthorne's fault. But Gone is the bisexual lighting that certainly did the first issue. No favors whatsoever. Back is Batman in actual shadow, looking like himself doing cool stuff when he's actually allowed to fight, and you get a reminder of just what a great character Batman is when he's done by the right artist. And I must say, Selina Kyle looks like a woman again. She no longer looks like she's Rocky Dennis's cousin. She doesn't look deformed. She's actually quite beautiful in this. It's not quite clay man, Selina Kyle, but it's pretty damn close, and I was very happy to see that she looked like a sexy, vibrant woman again. Definitely appreciate the art. And that is 100% without question the high point of this comic book. Jorge Jimenez returning from Nemesis Reloaded back to Batman. Hasn't missed a beat. Looks like a million bucks. Everything else pretty much sucks other than one thing, which I'll get to. Once again, we do have the Bat family sitting around and pondering the question of is Selena Kyle right? We've got Barbara Gordon. We've even got Dick Grayson. We've got Spoiler. We've got Tim Drake. We've got Jason Todd. All the Bat family are sitting around talking about how just out of control Batman is because he's actually started patrolling the streets again and stopping crime again because these people are so incompetent, they didn't even realize anything had changed while Batman was sleeping. Dick Grayson says he's out of control. Barbara, I think it's the opposite, Dick. He's doing it to be in control. We've got spoiler. The Selena of it all. I saw one of her guys sneaking into a home tonight to perform a crime to rob somebody, and I did nothing. It feels weird. So we now have her talking about the action that she took. Didn't even stop a crime. Now we've got Tim Drake. Same, Steph. I feel like I'm in a holding pattern. I saw Batman tonight arresting one of the thieves, the criminals. He was so angry at me, at us. He should be angry at you because you're not actually out there doing anything. You're not stopping crime anymore. That's the entire purpose of the family. 
And somehow it actually gets worse once Jason Todd chimes in. He claims crime boss Catwoman is saving lives by robbing people with every thief he stops talking about Batman. He's just driving them back to their old ways of crime, even though they're committing crimes in their new ways. Batman's the problem here because he's still actually committed to stopping crime. He's driving them to be henchmen to violence as if no one's getting hurt while these idiot novice cat burglars are sneaking into people's mansions and getting gunned down by private security. None of that is happening. None of these people with actual means that could actually pay for their own private security have ever decided that would be a good idea. It's Batman that's driving up the violence, right? Because he's the bad guy in the story. And the worst thing about this is they actually all agree that they will distract Batman while he's trying to stop crime so Selena Kyle and her thieves can continue robbing people all night. That is the action they decide to take. Fortunately, because Batman is not a complete fucking moron, he sees right through it. He sends a drone in. He oop-de-oops them. They end up in the wrong place, and he takes down her training facility. That is enabling more thieves to go about Gotham and rob people blind, rob them of their mother's pearls, and this is what happens. The entire Bat family save Damian Wayne actually show up. Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, because he's already fought him by this point, Tim Drake, Spoiler, Orphan, The Signal all show up to physically confront Batman. And I will say this, I was very happy the moment that Bruce Wayne knocked Spoiler's fucking lights out and she got what she deserved. Does anybody in this fucking world believe that the Bat family would actually physically accost him, try to murder him because Jason Todd absolutely takes a shot at him and blows the drone up that he thinks is Batman and coming when that moment happens. He actually tried to kill Batman to save Selena Kyle Catwoman's criminal enterprise. This is the action of the Bat family itself. We all know that Tim Drake is a dead character. They've already ruined him, but now they've decided to include Dick Grayson Nightwing. Great character. Jason Todd. Yes, there is a little animosity between Batman why is it every time Jason Todd and Bruce Wayne actually fix something and they come to some type of common agreement, some common ground, the next writer just acts like it never fucking happened and he wants to murder Batman again. And that is what happens. Batman obviously gets away because Damien shows up because he's the one other fucking hero in this comic book that actually acts in character, stops them from lynching his father, who's stopping this enormous amount of crime that's overtaking the city that these other supposed heroes refuse to stop. And guess what happens at the end of this? Guess what happens once Batman and Damian Wayne leave and the entire Batman family are in Selina Kyle's training facility that has been partially destroyed? They open up a door. Guess what's lying behind the door? A man with a gag in his mouth that is tied to a chair that has been fucking kidnapped. That is the person that these fucking idiots are actually protecting. These guys are all failures, they're all losers, and after what they just tried to do to enable more crime in Gotham, they all deserve to be in Arkham for at least 20 to 25 years. Hopefully, Commissioner Montoya and the judicial system of Gotham City sees it the same way because these guys are all fucking criminals now. There is another aspect or plotline of this comic book that I guess is getting some more headlines regarding what happens in Batman uh, 137. I think that part right there, the entire Batman family acting out of character is the big headline. But actually, what they're running with is a little subplot that happens in the middle and then gets paid off at the very end of this. It turns out while Batman Bruce Wayne was asleep, he wasn't asleep because you can't actually sleep for eight weeks. He was in a coma. While he was in a coma, he had put up his Wayne Manor as collateral on a loan, which apparently he defaulted on. They tried to contact him while he was unconscious in a coma, and now they've decided that they're going to foreclose and take Wayne Manor from Bruce Wade in this case. So now he's lost his billion dollars to Lucius Fox, who stole it. He's lost Gotham City to, to Catwoman. He's lost the Batman family also to Catwoman because she's a better leader with better ideas, apparently. The only way to solve crime is with more crime, and now they've taken Wayne Manor. Me, personally, I think this is a really, 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 really overwhelmingly stupid plot point. I don't think it adds anything to the story, and I don't think it was necessary or even a good idea. But the payoff to this, I do like. I want to put that out there, because you do see the criminal behind the taking of Wayne Manor 
and I kind of like it. If you're going to do something stupid, at least do it in style. And as far as the story goes, that was the high moment. The very last page of the comic book when you get the reveal of who actually stole Wayne Manor or took it out from underneath uh, Bruce Wayne. There's also another thing in here that just, it just, it, it chaps my balls. That's what it is. It just annoys the crap out of me. So I'm going to talk about it right here. The opening scene, we see another of these new cat burglars are going into this hotel. They're going to rob them blind. And there are a couple of members of Selena's new like henchman team. And they're supposed to be undercover and they got orange coveralls or whatever. But here's the thing. If you're obese, you can't be a cat burglar. You're never going to be an effective capitalist. You're never going to be able to get out of a tight situation. You're going to get stuck in the goddamn window. This woman is way too fat for anyone with half a brain cell to ever consider training to be a cat burglar. Likely cannot climb. That would be a big issue if you wanted to be a cat burglar. If she's in, I don't know, a mansion and she's trying to crack the safe, next thing you know, she turns over to get a piece of equipment. Her bunt hits like a candlestick hits the ground, makes some noise. Next thing you know, you're caught. Fat people as cat burglars is the dumbest idea of all the ideas in this comic book that's full of really dumb ideas. Once they realize that they've been robbed blind by these two people and the police say, can you give us a physical description of the of the perpetrators? Well, the one guy, he was kind of average height. I don't know, maybe he had brown hair. I'm not really sure. Nothing really stood out. But his accomplice was six foot three, 265 pounds uh, female. That might help out just finding their person. Oh, yeah. Also, she has more chins than a fucking Sharpay. Do you think you can find this woman in Gotham City? How many six foot three, 265 pound obese women with glasses do you think are walking around the city? I bet you. I just have a feeling they might be able to zone in on this master criminal that is somehow a cat burglar and catcher. I, I believe that you're setting yourself up for a big fall, training up a morbidly obese woman to be a cat burglar. Just an idea, just a thought in my head. I don't know if this was a Jorge Jimenez idea or if this was dictated in the script by Chip Zdarsky himself, but whoever came up with that idea, go fuck yourself because that's really stupid. And that is my review of Batman 137, Chip Zdarsky, Jorge Jimenez, chapter two of the Gotham War. And um, I'm probably not going to read the, the Catwoman story because I, I can't put up with that much Teeny Howard writing. And I do feel bad for Nikki Leod, but uh, their art's not going to be good enough to make it worth my, my life to actually waste it on that thing. But this is a train wreck that I do not believe I can look away from. So I am going to follow the Batman side of Gotham War all the way to the end, and I will read the finale. And I'm planning on reviewing every issue here on the channel because... It's so bad in execution. I'm going to have plenty to say each and every issue of this. I feel like this is the worst thing that's happened to Batman since Tom King's Nightmares story arc. Do you remember Nightmares? Maybe the worst story arc in Batman history. And there have been some very bad Batman stories over the 80-year history of the character. I think this one is right there with it. So I'm not going to be able to look away. I'm not going to peek over to Catwoman because I know what Teeny Howard's writing is and I'm not going to invite that into my life. Chip Zdarsky is at least is a better writer, and the art by Jorge Jimenez is good enough that at least I'll enjoy looking at the train wreck as it's happening, and I'm going to cover the whole thing. I, I can't stop now. I feel pot committed, and I feel like it's a public service to deliver this to you guys because you don't want to pay for it, but you are probably also interested in just how bad this is. If you haven't seen my review of the very first issue, maybe you're coming in fresh on this and you weren't sure exactly what was happening here. Here is my review of Batman Catwoman the Gotham War, and then something else, number one. It was a big-ass long title. It's a terrible comic book. Definitely check it out right here if you haven't seen it or you want a refresher. There's also a link in the video description.